Hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL, where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. Y'all are not going to believe what happened to me the other day. So if you've ever listened to more than two or three episodes of the show, you've heard the story about the time that I laid it all on the line, told this guy how I felt, asked him if he wanted to move forward in a relationship. I did this in the park on a bench. I then was really disappointed because he said no. And I was that girl walking around New York City crying with mascara dripping down her face. So guess who texted me out of the blue the other day? (laughs) Yes, him. And guess what else? He's coming on the show. I have a bone to pick. I needed to know why things went down the way they went down because we never really talked about it. Like we had... We weren't like on bad terms, but we just never really got to the conversation I needed to get to. So he's going to be on in a couple weeks. So look out for that. (laughs) So today I have with me actually one of my listeners, Effion, who has listened to all the episodes and he happened to be in New York today. So he was like, hey, like, can I come on the podcast? He has an amazing, gorgeous daughter and he's married. So we're going to talk about parenthood, marriage and all that. I'm not married. What'd you say? I'm not married. Oh, you're not married. But, yeah, just girlfriend right now. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, are you guys going to get married? That's the plan. That's okay. The plan for sure. Yeah. Can I ask why the wife, why the kid before the wife? Or? You know what? Sometimes life just Not that, that it that matters. Way. Just curious. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, that's always the plan, you know. I think uh, marriage is always the goal. But, hey, fatherhood came first. Wow. And I, and I just embraced it. And uh, that's the plan. So marriage in the very, very near future, and we're all going to see Nice. So where are you from? What do you do? All that? All right. So I'm actually from Detroit, Michigan, uh, the Motor City. Um, and I'm actually a revenue management specialist for a utility energy company. So pretty good, stable situation. Uh, I've done a little bit of uh, athletics in my life, personal training, do all kind of little stuff on the side. But yeah, revenue management is my, is my uh, career. Nice. So how did you uh, meet your girlfriend? So I used to see her around like the city. Like a little bit, because the city, Detroit is, compared to New York, is, is, is nothing. But as far as, it's a, real, it's a small city, but it's a big city. So I always see her around. I thought she was kind of cute. But actually, I got to really get cool with her through work. Mm-hmm. And I told myself, I worked at my company for four years. I told myself I was never going to date anybody at work, talk to anybody at work. But, man, this girl was something else. She would cook for me and bring it to work, and she was so sweet. No one so this ever. is before you guys were together. She would yeah. just be like, hey, I made this for dinner last night. I thought you might want some. No girl ever did that to me, ever. Wow. Yeah, she wasn't playing. She wasn't playing at all. So at this point, was she just being friendly, or was she, like, on sort of a mission? Like, I like this man, and she I'm going to let him know. She was on a mission for sure. Like, she was really, she came off real shy. That's why it was kind of surprising. She was really aggressive, but shy and kind of quiet. Right. I was like, dang, this, this girl's something else. But uh, hey, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. She was giving me <laughs> meals. <laughs> I took those meals. So she was like, not necessarily out there like by saying, oh, you know, I like you or, oh, we should go out. But like her actions were, were really aggressive. And, and not in a bad way, like aggressive exactly. in a good way. Like you're going to know by what I'm doing. Men that- love aggressive women. That's... Is that true? I do. I love, I mean, if you if you want something and you know something you want, go for it. I like that. I like that drive, you know? It shows a lot of confidence. It just shows a lot of, like, you know, assertiveness. I like that. So right away, if she would have came up to you mm-hmm. and just said, hey, let's go out, you would have liked that and you would have done it? For sure. We were on a date for sure. But the way she went about it, it was work. So she kind of went about it like, what do you want to eat? And just, it started off gradually. Then it got to like, when are you going to take me out? So I didn't like, you know, I was kind of. So wait, why didn't her. you ask? Why didn't you ask her after she was bringing you all these meals? I had a rule. I'm not talking or dating anybody who I work with. That was so that was the only thing. It was just about this work thing. Exactly. I was trying to move up in the company. I was trying to be focused. Uh, like, nope, I'm not doing it. I didn't want those problems. Right. Know? But typically, would you, would you approach women generally outside of work? Or would you let them approach you most of the time? I'm mostly laid back. But if I see something I want, I'm going to get it. Or at least put it out there that I want it, you know? What's the right way for a woman to approach a man when she does? To start a conversation, you know? Women, even walking around New York City uh, by myself, really, you know, women just don't talk to men. You know, 
people just don't talk to people right. randomly. So right. I just starting a conversation shows a lot, you know? It's piqued your interest and, uh, you know, I haven't looked back. How long have you guys been together? Three years. Okay. Yeah, three years. Yeah. And how old are you again? I'm 31. Okay. 31, yeah. That's a good age. It is. It's, it is a good age, man. I'm, um, I'm ready for just uh, marriage chilling. We have, we have fun. We kick it. <laughs> this little girl kicking our, kicking our ass, though. She, it's a lot. Happening. So how is that? How old is she now? She's 16 months old. And yeah. this is your first child? First child, yeah. And hers, too? Yeah. Yeah, both our first. So what's that been like? You know what? I, having a child with someone is probably the most difficult thing. Especially if you had known each other for a long time, because mm-hmm. we was only with each other for like a year and a half when we first had a child. Oh yeah. You either it it's probably the strongest bond you can ever get with a, another person, or it could be the the thing that ends the whole relationship. Mm-hmm. To be honest, it's it can go one way or another. And we had our struggles for sure. Before um, you guys had her, what's her name? Harper. Harper. Oh, I love that name. Yeah. Uh, so before you guys had Harper, mm-hmm. did you all? discuss how you planned on parenting or was it just like when she comes we'll figure it out you know what every once in a while you might have those like discussions like you know religious backgrounds is one big thing how you want to raise a child religiously we have different religious backgrounds mm-hmm. what uh, is her religious background you jehovah's witness is how she was raised mm-hmm. even though she's you know not so much in it in it but she was raised that way so it's a little different i was born catholic you know i'm i'm half nigerian and my mom's from detroit so we went Catholic, so mm-hmm. it's a little different. But uh, we talked about it, but we never sat down in relationships. We don't. We never sat down and had the traditional. Let's talk about our future. Right. Just enjoyed each other. We had fun with each other. Um, I treated her. I treated her good. She treated me good. And we had <laughs> we had a baby out of uh, out of bliss, and it was a it was a beautiful time. Yeah. So what's the what's the hardest part about just a baby? <laughs> this whole person that you're in charge of. Man, just that. That's a whole person you're actually in charge of. Your life uh, changes. It becomes um, taking care of someone. I think space is really important. So I got to make sure she got time with her girls. I got time with me and my boys. We about to go to a bachelor party in like two days in Vegas. So Nice. I can't wait for that. Both just, of you together? No. So I'm doing a family oh. trip here in New York. Then I'm going to fly to Vegas. So got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. The hardest part is just really raising someone. Um, it's really hard. Like I, and she, she's a great mom, and she's really, really attached. And it's a job. Yeah. And also, she has a job, and that is really hard on her. So um, it's brought us closer together now because she really, she really goes hard as a mom, and I really just appreciate how she raised my daughter. Was it? Is it a lot different than you expected, or is it about what you expected? It's like what I would have wished for. You know, I, I didn't know. You don't know what to expect having a child with somebody. You know, you don't not know. And at first, when we first had her, we had our rough patches, you know, where mm-hmm. we, I didn't think we was going to make it. Two people living together already is one thing. It's, living together is hard. And, you know, you have I your I can ups attest to that. Exactly. <laughs> living with somebody's hard. You, uh, Did you guys live together before uh, Harper? No. She was always over. My, oh, my so this all happened, like, at once. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So she had the baby, then you guys moved in together, like right around the same time. So it's like you're That's adjusting exactly to just being around each other all the time and now living together. Right. Plus, there's this whole new person there, too. And I would say, at that time, when we first started moving in with each other, it was really difficult. Now, it's like beautiful. What we, was difficult about it? You have to really learn somebody. Not every day you're going to be in the best of moods. Not every day you're going to be in... You know, you just got to learn the other person and see what really, what they like to do, what they don't like, they moves, give them space when they need it. You yeah. got to know, you got to pick up on that stuff, you know? I mean, the crazy part is like you think sometimes that because you're around somebody or they, they spend the night all the time mm-hmm. and, you know, like that it's like, oh, it's like living together. It is so not. It's just not. Yeah. Like when you literally spend every waking moment with somebody, <laughs> I mean like every waking moment. You, there are just things you learn that sometimes blow your mind. You're like, huh, it's deep. I wasn't aware that you did that all it's the deep. time. You're not going to like everything about your partner. <laughs> like, sure. you just going to fart in front of me like that? Like, no yeah. apologies? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that happens. If, <laughs> I don't think she farted the whole time Like when we was like dating. I was like, yeah, I didn't know you were <laughs> capable of farting. Nah, she just let him rip. <laughs> I think the hardest thing for me was, one, I've never, had you lived with a woman before that? College. 
I had never lived with a guy. Okay. Um, I barely had roommates. Yeah. And, uh, like, I just, I didn't realize how much I valued just coming and going without explanation, Mm -hmm. how much I valued my alone time, because I didn't consider it alone time, because I was just, like, I live by myself, so when I go to my house, I'm by myself. But not having that, and, like, Chris is, if if I could be around a person all the time, he's probably the person I could be around all the time. Yeah. But I'm, like, yo, like, sometimes I'll think, and I'm, like, damn, I haven't been alone in, like, four days. Like, just no time where I've been completely by myself. And I'm just really starting to value that now. Like, just that time with nobody around. When I'm just, Yeah. When I'm just in the house, and I'm just chilling, Mm -hmm. doing nothing, all by myself. I remember when my car was in the shop for like a, like two weeks, I rode to work with her. And it's like, you even value that 30 minute commute to work in the morning by yourself. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's a lot, you know, when it comes down to it. But, uh, one thing I've noticed, because at first I was doing the whole boyfriend thing wrong. I was letting my bad habits from the past kind of affect this relationship until I sat back. And when she, you know, became uh, the mother of my, of, uh, of Harper, I look back and like, if you treat, a woman like your best friend like how you would you know you tell your best friend everything you know mm-hmm. your best friend is like you tell them everything you tell them uh you know t- t- every situation so i just treat her like my best friend and it just works out perfect you weren't doing that before exactly what made you realize that you needed to change that i, I felt like she was trying to change to for me and i want her to be herself you know yeah i, I don't like all that uh you know i'm nigerian we could be a little bit uh you know, a little Nigerian. No, <laughs> we could be a little Nigerian. If you know, if you know Nigerian. So sometimes, shout out to my Nigerians out there. That wasn't shade. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you just got to sit back and just let her do her, let her be herself, let her go out, let her get some space, get some time. Are just, you like me? Are you a little bit of a control freak? I was. Okay. Yeah. And now I'm controlling myself, so I can't be a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a control freak for sure. I am. Yeah, super control freak. See, I just like to. I think it comes across as control, Mm -hmm. but I just like to know everything and, and not to control. I don't think, but just because I do want what you were talking about. Like I want to be with my best friend who I just happen to be in love with. Like me know everything though. I don't like, I don't like mystery. Mm -hmm. I don't like, um, secrets. I don't like, like, you know how someone's like, that guy is just so, I don't know, mysterious. There's just (laughs) something about him. I do not like that. I was like, mm, I sense a little mystery. I don't like that. What are you hiding? Like, wh- why can't you, why aren't you, what aren't you telling me? Like, I don't like that. Like, I prefer to know everything. That's just right. how I am. Like, I have to know everything. And if, and if a guy has a moment where he's just like, yeah, I don't want to share that. That's done. Like, well, that's the thing I have to know then. <laughs> Red flag. Well, living with somebody and being with somebody, I think you have that right to know everything about that person. Shouldn't be no secrets, right? I 100%. Like, yeah. there none. I feel it. I'm the same way. Sometimes it's not healthy to know everything, though. Why? If you're anything like me, those things stay in the back of your mind. They always influence decisions like, you make Like, what in wouldn't you want to know? I wouldn't want to know any, like, any partners before me. I don't want to know that. <laughs> Why? Okay, this, this brings me to a really good point. Because a lot of men say that. Yeah. And I never... I understand there's like a, I'd like to think I'm the only one, but let's be clear. Let's be <laughs> yeah. real. Yeah. We all know you're not. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like at, at past age 20, like there's a very slim chance that you're the first person. Like, good luck with that. So like, why can't that be discussed? Like why? Like we all know the truth. Right. It's one of the type of things where you want to know. But you really don't want to know, you know. You want to know it because your curiosity. You want to know it just so you can delve deeper into their soul. But hey, in, in the day, you don't really want to know. I, I want to know. Unless it influences my day to day life. If it's somebody I'm going to see, mm-hmm. yeah, let me know. Don't have me go into the situation. What's up, bruh? And I, you know. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Let's say you guys are going to a party or function or something mm-hmm. like that, and there, she happens to know. Oh, I saw that such and such. You know, RSVP on the Facebook invite. Okay. Would you want to know before you walked into that You're room? Talking about an event that she coordinated? No, just oh. like let's say you know somebody's throwing a party. Oh yeah. You guys are going to the party. You RSVP on Facebook. She was like, "Oh dang, I just saw that this guy I used to be with RSVP on Facebook." Do you want to know, or you just don't want to know? 
I'm a want to know, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? And she would probably tell me too because she knows how I am. Now, why do you want to know in that situation versus not generally? Even because it's probably just like this is probably the one time you're going to see him. So my girl thinks if I'm in any room with any guy mm-hmm. that she used to either talk to date or whatever, or even might have had a crush on her. She thinks I act extra masculine around them. I don't think I do. She said it's like an involuntary thing I do. <laughs> she says I shake their hand extra hard. <laughs> like you like, bruh, bruh, you're squishing my bruh. <laughs> she said I keep my chest poked out. I, I don't think I do it, but she says I do it. So I might want to know. Yeah, I'm going to know. But I don't think that's a good trait. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm being transparent that I would want to know. But fellas, if you're listening, you don't really want to know. Live life. Don't worry about that. In that, I mean, I mean, have you been in that situation? And do you, in hindsight, wish you wouldn't have known? <laughs> the only situation I could think of right now in hindsight, when I think about that, alcohol was involved and it wasn't good. So, am my new mature thirty-one-year-old self, yes, I want to know, and I'll act professional. And <laughs> hey, matter of fact, we just. <laughs> Crazy enough story. We went to an open house because we're buying a new place. Mm-hmm. Guess who was at the open house? One of her exes? Her ex-boyfriend with, her, with his girlfriend. Wow. Crazy. Was so there I, bidding war over the house? No. <laughs> I don't want that house. It's haunted. <laughs> it's tainted now. No, it's just funny because we were walking out. He was walking in and um, I, I was watching her face and she was kind of like, they didn't really talk, so I'm like, that's kind of weird. I went up Did to you him. know it was him, though, before? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. So I went up to him, you know, shook his hand. What's up, brother? How you doing? You know, mm-hmm. I walked out, kept it cool. It was awkward, but uh, it happened, you know? I'm like, damn, I'm definitely not moving into that place for sure. He can have that. <laughs> <laughs> that's your house, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that house, man, for sure. See, I think that, like, I've pretty much met most of Chris's exes mm-hmm. like obviously the girl's mom and uh his the girl he dated right before me wow and his uh his college girlfriend there's mm-hmm. probably one there's one major relationship in there she just lives overseas otherwise i probably would have met her but it informs me so much like yeah. it really helps me like i like i've only known him for a year and a half now mm-hmm. right but it really kind of helps me picture where he was at that point. You know, I'm also yeah. the type that'll like ask your mom, like, so like, yeah. tell me what he was like as a kid. That's real. Yeah, and that so a lot about a person. for me, it's like I've, I'm filling in the, the 38 years before I arrived on the scene. And so mm-hmm. when like like his college girlfriend who was on the show a couple weeks ago, like I, I really like her. Like, yeah. I think she's great. And I see exactly why they were together at that point in life based on who she is and was and who he is and was. Right. And I think it's like, great. I'm like, but they, they're just like, but it doesn't, I think it doesn't bother me only because I'm like, well, they've obviously both moved on a long time ago. Like mm. they don't want each other. No, but you know, it's not in the back of your mind though. Like, no. You don't think about that stuff? And no. And maybe That's good. maybe it's because she's also married and has a family and kids and like, you know, yeah. she didn't really got time to think about that. But I think the the one that maybe challenged me a little bit was, you know, his his daughter's mom. Mm. Because that's so they're forever connected. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so despite the fact they've both been like, yeah, I'm not on that like because it's like well what if what if one day you guys just decide because they have this forever permanent connection and so i think that was the only one that i was like maybe intimidated by because Mm -hmm. i felt like are you a real romantic person i can be so when your imagination starts going crazy you start thinking like what if they just rekindle this love over the children right i've definitely had those thoughts i have definitely had those thoughts but from what I've heard from people who have children, you get to that point where that door has closed. Right. Right. And yeah. and that's what I've had to come to. But yeah. yeah, other than that, like, I guess I kind of feel like if that person wanted to still be with mm-hmm. one of their exes, they just would be. But like, yeah. they're with me. 
So absolutely, they want to be with me. That says a lot about uh, say Chris, right? Yeah, there's a lot about him though. He's he's a, probably just a super dude, you know. Yeah, no, he he it says really a lot is about him, you know, to have still even to be so cool because some people have don't have good relationships with their baby mothers, you know. Right. You know, that's usually it can be bad. So that says a lot about him, man. They're like an amazing example of co-parenting. Yeah, he's he's probably a great guy. I wish he was here. Yeah, like he'll he'll probably be here before you leave at some point. All right, for sure. But um, I yeah. might get, I might need some tips from <laughs> Chris. For sure. He's just he's just he's just super calm. I think is what it is. Like he just. I don't know. He's just calm all the time. I think that comes with age and experience. <laughs> oh, totally. Like yeah. he's he's thirty nine. He'll be forty next year. Yeah. So I think like, you yeah. know, I don't. I I can't say exactly what he was like at twenty, but from what I understand, he's definitely calmed down. So <laughs> yeah, even me, even at the last couple of years, I've I've changed. I'm a lot more tranquil and uh, relaxed. Uh, How do you think a kid changes you? Your priorities, man. This is my daughter is my everything and um that relationship with you know me and her mom is really important to me too because i was raised my my parents are still together Mm -hmm. they've been together my grandparents been together 65 years wow my parents been married 35 years so i come from that core value i know how important that is right that's my number one priority keeping the family together make sure everybody's happy and sometimes you got to swallow your pride. I'm a man with a lot of pride, a lot of ego, a lot of competitiveness. I just thought of that, Jay. You know, what's the little Jay Z line? He's like, shit, I'm a man with pride. You don't do shit like, like that. that. You exactly. don't just pick up and leave like that. Exactly. <laughs> you don't throw away what we had just like that. Exactly. But he talks about how he was on some crazy stuff and he got mad when she was on some crazy stuff. But that's another story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they get on crazy stuff for sure. My girl get crazy in a second, but she's she's been cool. How has she changed in the relationship since becoming a mom? She's learned me. I'm not the... She's learned me. I think at first, she even says this all the time, man. She was like, I was in lust with you at first. You know, that's expected. We had a good time. and It did last a long time. Lust does wear off. Mm -hmm. Lust is only there for a limited time only. Then you have to have some substance behind that. Right. Then it comes down to a whole different dynamic. So... She had to learn me and learn how I am. I have to learn her. You know, we just have to learn each other. But that's probably, like, the biggest thing. Yeah. Like, how do you know when the lust fades? Like, Mm. what's that line? Because it's not just a sex thing. You know when the lust fades when, um, you know, you you get everything ready, nice romantic, even set up, and then all of a sudden you just hear a baby start crying. (laughs) (laughs) Diapers need to be taken out. But you know what? To be honest with you, though, we be tired, too, man. Working and a child, you be tired as hell. And it's, like, kind of draining. And I, I've never been a person who planned for sex. Right. Planning sex is so lame to me. Agreed. It's, like, the lamest. I never wanted to do that. I wanted to do random sex. Like, when you feel it, let's do it. But with a child, the reality, the dynamic change, is, that reality is gone now. So wait, do you have to plan it now? Like, we're going to put her down at 9 I p.m.? Go, I can go back to the hotel right now, see the New York skyline, fill in my little wine, be in the mood, see my girl, baby looking at me like, hey, daddy, I'm, you, can't, <laughs> you can't do nothing. And done. <laughs> then the baby goes to sleep finally. You might wear down. You're thinking about life. You got emails to check. and you, life, you know, life happens. Right. You never know. But when lust fades... I think it, if it fades completely, then you shouldn't be with that person. Agreed. But it's not always going to be the same butterfly lust when you first started. But yeah. those those times and those like instances, they do pop up. And they have, pop up in random times. You never know. I found this, though. Fellas, take notes. When it comes to a woman, I can walk around the house with my shirt off and I just did a workout and I think I'm looking good. That means nothing to her. She's seen me every single day. So somebody walk around the street, it might do something to them, but not my girl. She knows me. That doesn't do anything. It's what you do mm-hmm. to really spark it. Mm-hmm. Stuff you do. Little spontaneous trips. Things like that. Like that really. So you have to know a woman. Men are, we're different. I'm physical. I see her walking around with some boy shorts on. I, that gets me going. Right. Me? She looking at me like, oh. She sees you do them dishes. That gets her going. <laughs> I be walking around with a shirt off at the workout. She looks at me and just keep going. I'm like, damn, I'm a turd with eyes. <laughs> That's so true, though. Like, 
women don't lust after bodies like that. Like it is really like when you see them doing something mm-hmm. that either you really want or need. Exactly. Or something I'm still like I'm I'm big on like the if I see you like fixing something, I don't know why. Like I'm old school in that way, but it's no, like real. damn, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Women are the most complex, beautiful things working this earth because we'll never fully understand you. We just live with y'all and we try our best to understand you at times. <laughs> We're so simple. I'm a Neanderthal. <laughs> I it's so simple. It's so physical for me, but you know, I love my girl. I love the way she raised my daughter, but um it's all fi- uh, it's physical for me. It's like when I book a trip, even this photo shoot I had. Mm-hmm. That turns one, oh, my man got us a photo shoot. We traveling. That gets them going, you know? Right. For me it's very simple. But uh yeah. I think it's like you have to learn what your woman likes. And yeah. I think for men the 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 block in that mm-hmm. is well that's not even something i would like or that's so simple why is that even a thing exactly. and so they don't do it like for me i'm like so like i could be so basic sometimes but like i love flowers yeah. like i always have i love having fresh flowers yeah. around like it's just a thing i mm-hmm. just like it i don't know why and you know like the other day like my laptop was like going really slow and chris was like i'm going to get you a new laptop and i'm like I think it's fine. Like, it's fine. Like, let's just, you ready to put some new memory on it, whatever. Just like, let it right. be. Like, he's like, no, I'm going to get you a new laptop. And for him, that's, that's like his way of showing, like, I got you whatever you need. I'm here. I'm going to fix whatever issues you have in your life. And then. And that makes him feel good. And that makes him feel good. Mm-hmm. Now, I wasn't feeling well a couple of days ago. And he said, you know, like, do you need some like soup or like, what do you need? What can I get you? And I was like, some flowers. And he was like, he said, okay. And then guess what? He never got me. Flowers. Yeah. And I'm like. You know why? A new computer doesn't mean as, it wouldn't mean as much for whatever reason. Mm. Now I know a computer is like expensive and maybe that takes some, a lot of time and thought. I don't know. (laughs) But for me, I'm like, it was as simple as walking to the bodega down the street (laughs) It's a two minute walk and getting the flowers and getting a a five dollar bouquet of flowers. And like, I think men sometimes get stuck on. I want to do the thing that I think you want or that you should want versus the thing you actually want. So you want me to want a a new computer. I could care less as long as it works and I could do this podcast. I'm like, it's fine. Like, I'll get a new computer when it's done. But all I wanted was some flowers. And you know why? Why? Why didn't I get my flowers? Because Chris can't think like Tanisha. But I told him. I straight out said. Well, he said, what do you want? I said, That kind of takes flowers. the flare out if you tell him you want flowers. But here's. In here's, our mind, is we think like, you really want something that's going to die? Like, in two yes. Weeks, a week and I a just want to look at it for a day. And then I'm okay when because it dies. Because it doesn't make sense to Chris. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I understand it's a good gesture. It looks nice. But like. Do you really want it? I would never want flowers. So my brain... But that's you, and that's okay. Exactly. So you got to think, when you're in a relationship with a woman, as a man, we think different. Our brains are not wired the same way as Mm y'all. We're in our mind thinking, like, why the hell do you need flowers? They don't even smell that great. They do. They smell amazing. Those are peonies over there. I can smell them from over here. They do smell good. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, I think that's the thing that we really... Both men and women. I'm not just going to say men do this, but... Mm -hmm. You have to understand what your partner wants and needs, even if you wouldn't understand it for yourself. Exactly. That's why you have to learn your partner. Right. So, like, my dream Saturday night isn't chicken wings in the game. (laughs) Like, it's just not. But Chris loves that. So, sometimes I'm like, I ordered some wings, and I turned the game on, and... That makes you feel good, don't it? Have a good night. Doesn't like, it make yeah, you feel good watching it game, does. Wings. It does. <laughs> <laughs> like my ideal Saturday, I was like, let's go out to a nice dinner. Let's get dressed up here, put on this jacket. And that might have not been as fun for him. Mm-hmm. So I keep that in mind. I'm like, you know what? That's not his ideal. This is about him. If I'm going to make it about him, I'm not right. going to make it about me. So, Chris, you're going to listen to this episode and I'd still like my flowers. Come through, Chris. <laughs> let's have a drink. <laughs> Give me some pointers. <laughs> What's the most romantic thing you've uh, you've ever done for your girlfriend? 
So the most romantic thing I've ever done for my girlfriend that comes to mind is on her birthday that just passed, which would have been her 28th birthday. Um, we weren't living together at the time, even though we had my daughter. We had some renovations in my house. It was some, uh, we had some water damage, flood damage, so we did some renovations at our house. We was out of my house for two weeks. Mm-hmm. It wasn't technically safe to live because the water creates mold and all that right, stuff. Right, right. So, I was like staying with my mom. She's staying with her mom and the baby. So mm-hmm. her birthday was coming up, and um, I made sure that she um, I booked her something to go to D.C. with her friends because mm-hmm. I know she needed it. Right. Sometimes it's not all about roses. Sometimes your girl gets tired of seeing you. Right. <laughs> you have to be man enough and enough ego to say, we live with each other. We got this baby in the house. You see my face every day. Go with your girls and have a good time. Mm-hmm. Preach. Forget about me. Let Preach. Let me take the baby. You go. So I made sure I gave her a nice amount of money. I bought her like a little basket, all the stuff she likes, all her favorite snacks, you know, liquor, little things, and told her to go to D.C. with her friends. Her friends already knew about it. They all went to D.C., had a good time. Ron Howard homecoming, you know, that. It's yep. lit out there. Been there, done that. <laughs> so um, took her, you know, let her go out there, have fun. So I thought that was romantic because... It helped our relationship. Right. So, sometimes you need to get out. Be with your girls. Be away from the baby. She gets too caught up in being a mom sometimes. You know, being a mom is beautiful. Just go have fun. So I thought that was sweet. I got all her little snacks. She likes Slim Jims. That's very sweet. But it's, see, it's those little details. It's yeah. like you put Slim Jims in the basket because that's mm-hmm. what she likes. Yep. I got a big basket of just all like the stuff she likes and gave it to her. And, um, you know, she came to my our house, which was still getting renovations done and had a little layout for her there. Oh, you know, it wasn't conventional because we had our, our place was going through some things, but it was the thought that counts. And then uh, she went and had a good time, and it helped our relationship a lot. Um, since you're in New York for a short amount of time, mm-hmm. oh wait, you guys brought the baby. I was gonna suggest something really ro- like a romantic date. You gonna babysit? I could babysit. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of a girlfriend, a step girlfriend mom person right now, so. <laughs> No, I would never put that on you. But it's like, it's it's really pretty by the water. Mm-hmm. And you guys can go on like a nice walk. And there's like a, a rooftop, a rooftop restaurant that like has like a really pretty view. It's like a sushi place. It's just really like, it's, it's just really pretty. <laughs> Dates I've been on in New York mm. before I knew the guy that's coming on. The one who made me cry walking around the city. I can't wait to hear that. That's episode. one of the that's one of the first dates we went on. <laughs> like, that's a good date. Yeah, like he just took me around to to the boardwalk, and it was it was so romantic. He was good though. He was good. Was he a player? He probably wouldn't label it that way, mm. but yes, not in terms of he never lied to me. That's real. In a way where he never said. We are exclusive when we are together. Now I respect that. I was young and I was this was I was what, twenty seven, twenty eight at this point. Not that young. I should have known better. But I think I didn't there was a certain level of rejection I didn't want to feel and so I let <laughs> things be what they were. Right. But it was on us equally, but I think he knew what I thought and felt. But I also knew like women know. You yeah. just know. Yeah, th- women do. You just do. And if you don't, it's just simply because you want to deny it to yourself for whatever reason. But, yeah, he he definitely, he wasn't just mine. <laughs> and you know what? Most good guys aren't, you know? Most good guys aren't? Aren't just one person's. The good ones? Yeah. What do you mean? If you met a guy that was romantic, good looking, had everything going on for himself, wouldn't you assume he had someone? Not necessarily. You would just think he's just out here lonely. No, nobody. because I think that both men and women get to a point in life where they've kind of been there, done that, mm-hmm. and they become extremely selective. So they get to a point where they're like, I can entertain people. I can entertain anybody I want, but I'm choosing not to because I'm so focused on the right thing. Now, what do you mean by entertain? Because I, I don't know any single guy who's like, I'm not entertaining no females right now. I mean, like... I'm not going out on a bunch of dates with somebody who I clearly know I'm not interested in that way. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not going to waste time on this thing that I go, that I know is going nowhere. I hear you. Like I've been at that place and I know plenty of men who've been at that place where they're like, 
it's just not even worth the time and the effort anymore. That's a dangerous it's... place, though. When I was there, I was I still had sexual partners. That's... But don't you feel like that still? I always tell people like if you're if you're at a point where you're really ready ready to settle down and mm-hmm. like find the person that you want to be with and your life partner, if that's where you are, like wasting your time entertaining people that aren't that is only possibly blocking the door for somebody that is that. That's so true. That's so. so true. I, I, when I was at that point, I was just like, yeah. Like when I met Chris, I was like, yeah, thank you so much. But I'm actually just not dating right now. <laughs> like I'm just not dating anybody, just, period. Just shut the door. Including you inclu- because like I'm just, it's not where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I didn't say this to him. I, I told him that part, but the part I didn't say was like, it's pretty much Mr. Wright's coming or, or nobody's coming. I feel that. You know? Yeah. And I think that's the place you need to be to just, like clear, clear the the space. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Like, what if you're over here entertaining BS, and then your Mrs. Wright or Mr. Wright walks by and sees you, and they're like, "Oh, that must be their person. They must be ta- you know they must be occupied. Like yeah. the door seems like it's closed, so they don't even try. So I'm just yeah. like, when you're ready for that, like clear it all. Like tell everybody they got to go. Like focus on you and. And that, that's when it'll come, when you're just, like, done with the BS. And you know what, though, Tanisha? Men think the same way, too. We, but in the meantime, we still are, you know, <laughs> <getting bonds. laughs> In the meantime, you still have to have that. And you never know. Uh, sometimes you can get caught up in that, too. When you're just casually dating and casually, what I mean, you know, just kind of having fun a little bit, you can get caught up in that. You might, you know, you might start liking somebody, but a lot of my Does that male happen friends, for men in the way it does for women? I have this saying I tell my friends all the time, and I live by this. You know from the first moment you meet a chick what type of situation it's going to be. But depending on how they look, you might drive that car. You know the wheels are going to fall off. <laughs> but you're like, shit, I'm going to drive this car as long as possible. I, this is a Bentley. I'm going to drive it. I know it needs an oil change. I'm going to drive it as long as I can. <laughs> and that's not the healthiest thing to do, but we've right. all done it. You know? But we've men done. always know. Hell yeah, you always know. Like when I got with my girl, I knew she was more than just uh, a casual anything. I knew she was like, that's why I, I told myself when I first started like taking it serious, I told myself either I'm not going to talk to anybody at all who I work with or work around or I'm going to marry this person. Wow. It, it would have there to was be, no in between. It would have to be that. And she was throwing all this, everything out there. Wow. So, you know, it just, it, it was... It was there, you know. So before you guys met, what was dating like? Woo. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun. But you know what, man? I got uh, like one of my best friends. I got to shout him out. A Battle, my friend Alfie uh, in Columbus, my best friend from college. We talked all the time, man. He's a good-looking guy, man. We've always had women, per se. Mm-hmm. We had female friends and we travel, we have a good time, but there's always that emptiness at the end of the day. You right. Know? Like you can't have a good conversation with these chicks. If you're not flying them out and doing all that type of stuff, they're not really. I mean, it's just turning superficial, and it's just like no substance there. And we just always wanted, you know, we grew up on movies like Brown Sugar in the Wood. I mean, you wanted something, yep. no substance, yep. you know? So we had a pack, man. You, you wouldn't believe how many guys, like, talk to their male friends. Like, man, I wish I could just find a good woman. Because these chicks out here, man, cut throat, Tanisha. How so? <clears throat> Social media got in my hair. Wanted to compare them to the next girl. Um, you also just got like women just are doing dudes wrong, man. Like good guys. So we thought it was cool to not be a good guy. Like, I'm, I'm be a savage. So you felt like if I was the good guy, I'd be getting done wrong. Like she'd walk all over me because I was a good guy. Yeah, you gotta be stronger. So like I have to. You gotta be a savage in a way a little bit. Then you're going to meet that good girl and you got to change. Then, you know what? You think you're a savage until you get to that good, with that good girl who's educated, intellectual, has morals and values. But she'll switch on you in a second and you're like, oh, my God, I might lose her. Right. Let me get myself together. Because if I, I at one point I, I told myself if I lose my girl, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and uh, fix some things with myself. Because right. I'm like, this don't work. And I thought she was perfect. Somebody, maybe it's me. Mm-hmm. You know. So prior to this, like the it, the dating was very 
superficial and oh, like about sim- nothing. About nothing but physical, for real. For so real. then, why did you keep doing? Like, wasn't that draining? Like, wasn't that you know just what you like said early teens? You said it's very important. You said focus on yourself, right? Focus on your financial portfolio. Get your credit together. Hit the gym. Exfoliate your skin. <laughs> <laughs> go to church. Like you know, progress in your career. Because once you're doing that, women gonna come. If right. You going to the gym. You going to church, whatever you're doing, you were progressing in your career, you out here being social, having a good time, you're going to bump into women regardless. You don't right. have to worry about dating. They're going to literally fall right in front of your face. <laughs> like, hey. So I always tell fellas, worry about yourself. So I was worrying about, I was being That's selfish. That's the same thing I tell girls. <laughs> I was being selfish. Like I was getting myself together, you know? Right. When I find that person, they found it, but I was worried getting myself together. But that's, that's when it comes, mm-hmm. and it's because there's an aura when you're when you're really focused on like I'm gonna be the best person that I could be, mm-hmm. and not worried about like well let me be let me tweak this for that person or let me try to be this because that person likes that like there's like an aura of confidence and it, it vibrates and people feel they see that and they feel that and like that's what they're attracted to yeah. is like you knowing your worth and you knowing that I'm good like you right. can be here or you cannot. And either way, like, I'm good. And that's attractive. Like, that sort of confidence is attractive. And that's when you meet somebody. When you're not actually worried about somebody, that's when you meet somebody. When you're so, like, you're so comfortable with yourself and who you are and actually being alone. Like, when you get to the the very moment when you're like, you know what? It's okay if I don't meet anybody. Like, and that's a hard place to get to. It's not an easy place to get to. But Mm -hmm. you do, especially when you get in your 30s. You know, different for a woman and a man dealing with that biological clock. Perhaps. Um, for sure, for sure. Because I, I never had that feeling like you had. I knew eventually I would find someone, but yeah, like, maybe it's not right now. I, I think for women, yeah, it does. Like you know, you'll find someone eventually, mm. but what what point is your clock at? When you know, like eventually, can't be fifty two. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like depending on if you want like a family or what you want, That's like. True eventually like eventually got to be like cl- closer to 30 <laughs> you know true. what i mean yeah. and so the the clock does drive that but i think once you actually get to that place where you're actually like you know what like it's okay if i'm not a mother or it's okay if i'm a mother in a different way like you're not being driven by that clock mm-hmm. like that's when you'll actually meet somebody but when like you're being driven by all these external forces, like, well, I have to have, you know, a kid and then I have to be married and I got to do this. And, and you have mm-hmm. these orders in your head in which things have to happen and the way they have to happen. Like Absolutely. You, you're actually like you have a frantic energy about you. And then people like can see that and feel that. And they're not attracted to that. But, but you know what, though, Tanisha? What? I feel like I've known you for a while. Cause I listen to all your podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> so I like know how you are. You would have found somebody regardless because your personality, though. Well, thank you. Some people's personality puts them in such a uh, light. And you're just intellectual, also beautiful. You're going to find somebody regardless. Yeah. So I think more women have to be more outgoing, more aggressive, but not, you know, not in a crazy way, just aggressive and just outgoing. I mean, it would have happened for you regardless. You would have found a Chris. I don't know. Chris is pretty awesome. I don't know. But <laughs> you it, might the, not it, find another Chris. But it could happen, but it has to like I needed it to align with just mm. the right person. Cause I think that's the other piece is sometimes we get to a place where the worry and the fear of, Oh my God, um, almost 30 something. <laughs> it's gonna make you make a bad decision. And, and that'll have you going the wrong way. Cause yeah. you're like, oh, okay, well I met this guy. He's cool. Like he seems nice. He has a job. Okay. And it's like, that's not the criteria to spend the rest of your life with somebody. I think that actually the number one driver needs to be love for yourself. That's true. That needs to be the number one driver in the partner that you pick is That's love true. for yourself. Other things can come secondary to that. And the other things are not, uh, uh, somebody explained it perfectly once. She said, the, the, it's not a six foot, a six pack or a six figure. <laughs> right. All very important though. Important, but like not, really. not life, not not in deciding your life partner, like you're forever. Absolutely. You know, like important if you're like, I need a gym buddy. Important if you're like, 
I want to make sure I have tall kids, which still isn't 100%. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. but, but for like the person I want to spend the rest of my life with and build with, like not important. But if those are your physical things, physical criteria that you really need, though, there will come that time when you be with this right person, you might lust for something else physically. That's very dangerous as well. But I think you should never focus on things that you can actually change. Right? So, like, I have a lot of friends that sometimes will be like, I don't really like the way that guy dresses. I'm like, are you serious? The way he dresses? Uh, that's like one trip to the store to change that. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. My girl gets me together all the time. So, I'm like, don't focus on stuff like that. Okay, this isn't a person that hits the gym every day. Maybe all he needs is for you to be like, hey, like, I'm going to the gym. You want to come with me? So, it's like, I really try to focus on, like, things that it's like, you can't really change. You just, it comes as is like a person's heart to me. It doesn't really change. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah there's it's the foundation. You need to have yeah, foundation like the, the foundational things like have to be there. Like yeah. if you ain't in the gym, fine. Like let's get a trainer. Let's go to the gym. We'll work it out. Yeah. If you dress like crap, let's go to Bloomingdale's. We'll work it out. Like Bloomingdale's. <laughs> ah. It's just right there across the bridge. <laughs> so, it's but, doing good, yo. <laughs> but all of, like it, it's, it doesn't, those things, I'm like, it doesn't even matter to me anymore. Like, there was a point, obviously, like, in my life where, like, it was just, like, like the guy who's coming on the show. I was just, like, really blinded because I was like, damn, he is, like, really attractive. Mm-hmm. And, but I, was, I wasn't seeing a lot of other things that now, in my 30s, I'm just, like, there's a certain emotional and mental things and spiritual things that a man has to bring to the table. I was like, why, why would I even speak? Like, why would I even speak no, no, to you? That's very, very true. And I understand that. But those other things that you pushed aside will come up again, though. Eventually. True, but they're solvable things. Exactly. They are solvable. That's what I was about to say. They, they yeah, are solvable. They're, they're changable. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's the one difference. Like, yeah, they're, if, they're, if you disagree or don't like something, it's going to come up again. It's not just there's a, a reason. Time. There's a reason why you do this professionally. You've, you've got it soft. You know exactly what you got to do. Women, find a guy with the foundation that you want. Mm-hmm. You know, those core values. Work on the rest, you know. Have him start exfoliating if he needs it. <laughs> Hit the gym. You have great skin, by the way. I assume you exfoliate. <laughs> Man, you know what? I used to have terrible skin, but I started exfoliating, and it's getting a lot better. Wow. So I say What that. do you use? My mom works for Clinique. Shout out. Nice, nice. <laughs> but, yeah, but um, it's hard, man. You're never going to really have it completely figured out, you know? If I can put it, summarize it into, like, a, cu- a couple sentences, find somebody you like having fun with. Find mm-hmm. somebody you want to be yourself with. Find somebody you can sit on the couch Friday, Saturday night, Fart, have fun, <laughs> eat food, be yourself, know how to put makeup on, uh, make sweet love, go to ev- family events you really don't want to go to. But, you know, just you, you got to just find somebody you want to spend the rest of your life with. Mm-hmm. Life is short. Life is also kind of long. P- pick somebody good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're going to have children with them. Yeah, children are something else, man. I love children. See, I'll, it's crazy, man. Men like myself, I got to a certain age, I'm like... What I'm gonna be? I'm not gonna play in the NFL. I'm not gonna be a you know a, a movie star. My job is cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. I, I almost say I love working where I work, but I always want to be a father. Get a man who wants to be a father, right? Because being you know, anybody can have a baby, but being a father, whole different game. When you think about the kind of dad that you are and the kind of dad mm-hmm. that you want to be, do you take into account maybe who you have been? Uh, and maybe definitely. things you did wrong and things you want your daughter to be aware of or like how how are you parenting her based on the life experiences that you've had with women it's easy i got a daughter before you argue with your girl or pick a fight or say anything you got to think about your daughter first of all i have a daughter i have a girl who's going to grow up one day to be a woman like my girl it makes you soft I'm a softie now. I used to be <laughs> a tough dude, ego. Uh, you know, Detroit raises, it really breeds some real tough men in mm-hmm. Detroit's heart. So we all have a certain upbringing. But uh, having a daughter, it made me just soft. Soft to my woman's needs, soft to my daughter's needs. And I'm just, I'm just, you know, sometimes I'm just there because 
it's it's really all about them. Does she have more your personality or or your girlfriend's? We're, <laughs> you know, she looks just like me, but uh, she acts she does. like me too. Yeah, she got the lips and everything. <laughs> when we did this uh, Shea Moisture shoot, we uh, that that I came here for, it's like, yeah, we like your look, but we really love your daughter's look. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm here because of her. Cool. <laughs> I take that, but um, but yeah, she take that to me a lot. Her mama can be a little standoffish too. She's gonna be like a mom too a little bit. But <laughs> she take that to me a lot. So before we go for the night, what um. What sort of advice would you give to people that are at a point where a lot of things are new? So whether that be moving in with a significant other, mm-hmm. becoming a first-time parent, what, what sort of advice would you give my, on how to deal with that? My advice I would give, so for one, for first-time parent, is uh, the road ahead is going to be tough. You know, it's going to be tough for sure. Um, make sure you help your woman out. If you're a man, make sure you help her out. Uh, ease the burden on her. Um, love your babies. But watch her from afar. Watch a woman from afar to see how she bonds with your child. And if that doesn't make you want to change some of your ways, uh, delete some of those numbers in your phone that you've had, and um, start putting money down that ring, then uh, maybe you need to start looking elsewhere. Because mm-hmm. those feelings should start churning. If it's not, maybe it's something not right, you know? So you're saying it should change you, and if it doesn't, then... Maybe it's not right. Yeah. Maybe you have no soul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maybe you need some help. <laughs> wait, I mean, when you, look at your, when you look at your daughter that you made and you got somebody raising her, and me being a man having a daughter is a little different because, like, I'm with my woman, but I have a daughter. She's going to grow up to be a woman, too. Right. If you don't start treating women differently and see it from... You got to almost put yourself in their shoes. Women have a different role than than we do. Mm-hmm. Being black, being, you know, whatever race you are, being a woman is a different role. You have to respect the role they are and you have to put yourself in their shoes. They have a different role to travel. If you don't put yourself in their shoes, understand things, you'll it will never work. I love women so much. <laughs> They're so much better than men too. I say that. I'm sorry, fellas. I women silently just, agree. <laughs> women are just better than us, man. Like the way y'all div- uh, the way y'all are just you're just better, man. Has living with a woman made your life easier in terms of, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to put words in anybody's mouth, Mm -hmm. but I just feel like uh, stuff flows a lot better when I'm around full time. Well, you know what? And women in general, like there's just some things I'm like, how, how did you function? Like, what, what is this? How did you, you know what I'm saying? Like. I'm a true feminist, man, because I really just believe women are just, uh, I don't know, just, just superior. Because I, when I live, out, I live with my woman, she picks up on all my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. She does everything. She's so good with directions. <laughs> 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 so good with just so much stuff. And just uh, to the point where she picks up on everything that I'm lacking, you know? Yep. So, yeah, living with a woman, man, she, my life has gotten better. I'm here because of her. Yeah. I wouldn't be in New York right now if it wasn't for her. Making Harper and, if you're happy, you know, thank a woman. <laughs> I would order her right now, man. She's uh, when I first got where I was a different man. I will say that my priorities, uh, what I thought mattered in life, how I treated women, uh, I've changed, man. So I would order her. Good for you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. This was great, and you know, thank you for hitting me up while you were in town. Uh, for any of you other listeners out there, you know, if you're in New York and you listen to the show and you want to chat, let me know. Hit me up. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, one more thing. Can people reach out to you on Instagram or on, you know, Facebook, Twitter? Like, where are you at? Yeah. So um, so my Instagram, I'm on Instagram, not really Facebook. So it's E underscore Inyang. Uh, that's spelled E-N-I-A-N-G. That is a Nigerian name. And uh, yeah, follow me. And also look at pictures of his daughter. She's like the most adorable thing ever. Well, thank you. (laughs) Well, thank you again. And um, you guys can always reach out to me at Tanisha Wood on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Let me know what you think of today's show. And be sure to leave a rating on iTunes. Thank you so much. Until next time, wish me love. Hello again, my lovely listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of DRL. If you like the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review. And don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL. 
Thank you so much for supporting.